Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and a few years ago when Microsoft launched the Xbox One, they were talking about adding some DVR capability to the device so you could record live television. Unfortunately, that never panned out. They do have some live TV watching capabilities with a USB TV tuner that can pick up over the air signals and that weird HDMI uh, pass-through thing for your uh, cable box, which I don't think anyone really uses. Maybe a few of you do out there, but none of those solutions were really good for me. Uh, but yesterday, Silicon Dust, who makes my favorite digital TV tuner, the HDMI, HD Home Run uh, came up with an official Xbox One app that you can run and find uh, from the Xbox One store on your console. And this is one of the first universal Windows apps. This is running the same code uh, that their Windows 10 client does. And as you can see here, I loaded it up here and now it's uh, pulling down cable television from my HD Home Run that I have in the next room. It works with their DVR system also. And I'll get into uh, some of the specifics of the app here in a second. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that Silicon Dust, who makes the HD Home Run Tuners are an occasional sponsor here on the channel, and I've done some consulting work for them on their DVR Kickstarter that they launched last year. However, I have been a client of theirs long before they were a client of mine. They found me through uh, one of my first big videos here on the channel, which I uh, did on their product, where I showed how I was able to get rid of all the Comcast cable boxes in my house uh, by buying an HD Home Run Tuner and uh, using some uh, various software tools to replace all the cable boxes and save myself a lot of money in rental fees. That video, by the way, is now over a million views. So uh, this is a product that I use every day here. It's even approved by my wife. She's quite pleased with how it works. And I'm always finding different ways to tweak it. And I've done a lot of videos on it because there are a bunch of different ways to work with it. Uh, when I get through showing you this, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how I'm using it currently here in the house, kind of an update uh, three years later as to everything that I'm doing with the HD Home Run in my home. Now, we've covered their interface before, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But uh, what is nice is that it's the exact same interface that you'll see on Windows as well as what you would see on Android and even on uh, a Raspberry Pi running this on Kodi. They've kept a very consistent look and feel across all these different devices that uh, you can run their client on. Uh, the way it works with the game controller is a little different, of course, because you don't have a traditional remote control, but it does work with the Xbox Media Remote if you have one. I don't. Uh, so I have the guide up here. You can summon the guide by pushing A. That'll pull it up there. Uh, you can hit B to get rid of it again. If you hit B again, it'll back you out into the DVR interface if you have that enabled. And you can go through and look at all your different recordings that you have set up on there. So for example, if I wanted to uh, watch one of the Simpsons episodes that was recorded previously, uh, you can just uh, click on one of the episodes and it will come right up here and you can see uh, how fast everything springs to life. The fast forwarding works really nicely on it too. I can just uh, hit the right arrow key and move uh, forward through things very quickly as well as rewind very quickly too. So they've been improving a lot of the performance on this. And this is uh, streaming over my network because the Xbox will not run the recording engine that you need to set up all these recordings. So you need another computer or uh, an NVIDIA Shield or a network attached storage device like a, a WD MyCloud to do the actual recording. I've done videos on how, how all that works. So definitely check one of those out to get a feel for it. It really isn't that complicated to get going. Uh, and it really is a uh, low powered solution, both in the hardware you need as well as the electricity it requires. It's certainly going to be a lot more efficient than what your cable company might provide. And it really does uh, work quite nicely, but you can't yet run the recording engine uh, on your Xbox One. Now, I noticed one small quirk on the Xbox One app here, which is that it will actually play the TV audio in the background, even if you leave their app and go into another one. I think if you load up a game or something, that will stop the background audio. But uh, what I'm finding here is that if you back out of here, maybe go to the Windows Store or something else on your Xbox, uh, you'll still hear the audio. So what I found what you can do is uh, just get that window selected on here, uh, push the Start button, and then go over to Quit. And that will uh, close out the application and kill the background audio if that's an issue for you. I'm sure they'll. Uh, address that at some point in the future to uh, prevent that from happening. Now, uh, it will support the DRM content in the future. It's a very long process to get uh, certified to be able to run protected content. Now, some of you are on cable systems where they protect every single channel. Uh, on my cable system, they just protect channels like Showtime and HBO. So you can't currently uh, tune those on here, but you will at some point in the near future once they get all that worked out. So I believe the Android client uh, as well as the Windows client will support uh, those DRM 
RM channels. It's a very difficult process that they have to go through. They will get there, uh, but at the moment you can't watch protected content on here uh, right now, but that again will be addressed in the future. Now you're looking at what an HD home run box looks like. It has cable television going in, it has ethernet going out to my network, and it has a cable card installed on it because that is how I'm able to get uh, the cable channels that I pay for onto my home network without uh, having to use the Comcast equipment. I covered all of that in my very first video. Uh, and the way I'm using it today is largely the same way I was using it three years ago, but I've added more things to the mix that have been uh, slowly working their way into my uh, television watching lifestyle here. So uh, Windows Media Center is still my main uh, driver. So I have a laptop in there running Windows 7. I installed some software on there to prevent it from going to Windows 10 because Windows 10 lost the <laughs> Windows Media Center capabilities and I would blow up my entire network DVR in the house if I had that upgrade happen. So it's still on Windows 7. It's still running Windows Media Center. That will record live television. Uh, it also acts as the server for my uh, extender boxes around the house that we use to watch television on. So I have uh, in two rooms an Xbox 360 and then in another room an old uh, Windows Media Center extender. And the only reason why I'm still using Windows Media Center is that it does support the protected channels. So once uh, Silicon Dust gets their uh, DRM stuff working on their DVR product, I'll probably shut that down uh, and move over to their product because it will uh, work more reliably. I don't need to have a computer running there and I have a lot more choice in hardware as to what I want to run. So my plan is uh, once that does happen, uh, what I'll do is run the DVR recording engine from Silicon Dust on a WD My Cloud perhaps or maybe on my Synology NAS drive and then uh, probably use Android devices around the house to use as my cable boxes. I have NVIDIA Shield TVs which are uh, awesome set-top boxes that work great. They work great with the client that you have on uh, the official Silicon Dust application and then they also have their own uh, native live television watching thing that has a more traditional TV guide. So if my wife wants to watch live television and wants that guide versus the Silicon Dust guide, she can choose which one she wants to watch. And that's what I really like about this product is that you're not tied down to one particular piece of software that's made by the manufacturer. You can use their software if you want uh, or you can use third party software and they all work together on the same network. So I am uh, testing out their DVR functionality and that is running alongside uh, what I have going with Windows Media Center. I even have stuff here like on my iPhone. Uh, this is another third party app called Channels that we looked at a couple of weeks ago. I can just uh, tune live television uh, using a non-silicon dust app onto my phone here and uh, get everything up and running very easily without having to futz around with anything. It's really kind of nice that you have that capability that once that device is on your network, if software works with it, uh, it all will just work and you don't have to uh, ask permission of anyone to get this to uh, get going on your things. I really like the fact that they make hardware but they don't restrict what kind of software you can use with it. The only restriction you have is the number of available tuners on the device and by tuner, I mean how many things you can watch or record simultaneously. So the HD Home Run Prime is what I have in the closet over there. Uh, that has three tuners on it, so I can watch and or record uh, three different things at the same time. So if I have a fourth thing to do, I won't be able to do it. Uh, but what you can do is add on additional devices uh, to add additional tuners, and the software just kind of finds the tuner that it can use and uh, goes from there. So it really is a very seamless thing when you add more tuners to the mix to get everything going. Now you can also do it with over the air broadcasts as well. They have over the air tuner products too, and those have two tuners each. Uh, you can add additional ones, of course, to your network to add out additional functionality, but if you're looking to cut the cord completely, uh, you can get one of those, uh, those HD home run over the air devices, uh, put it up where you get the best signal in the house, and then run it into your network, and then you can get uh, the signal transmitted digitally throughout your home network anywhere in the house, and it's a great way to have to, uh, really good way to avoid having to have antennas on every uh, single television in your place, and you can add your own network DVR functionality to the mix as well. I don't have that option where I live. I get one channel here where I am in Connecticut, but uh, if you get more channels over the air, that might be something worth considering. Maybe buying two of those over the air boxes and you've got yourself a network DVR without a lot of uh, hassle for all of your additional televisions in the house. I do recommend you use Ethernet to make this work. That's the best solution, but it does work over wireless AC if you have a very good signal. So there are some uh, ways to make it work over wireless, but if you can, uh, run some Ethernet. I've also found some of the Mocha adapters, which I've also reviewed in the past. I'll put it down in the uh, description below to 
to learn more about that. Uh, those work over your cable television wiring, and I found to be very reliable too. Power line adapters haven't worked all that great, but um, so yeah, so I'm slowly transitioning over to uh, using the silicon dust product for my DVR here in the house. Not there yet. I'm waiting for the DRM to get put into place, but I'm using a lot more third-party apps in addition to uh, the official one. The Kodi client is really cool because I can run that on little Raspberry Pis, so I can spin up little cable boxes uh, for 30 bucks a piece anywhere in the house and get the DVR functionality on those things too. So really cool product. Again, if you're looking to cut the cord or uh, find some ways to augment your uh, cable subscription or reduce the cost of that cable subscription by getting rid of all of the uh, rental boxes you have in the house, this is a really good solution and it's getting better every day. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.